Welcome back everyone, I'm Caleb Dennison and I have heard a lot about these headphones over the past few weeks and now that I've got a pair for myself, I gotta be honest with you, I'm not totally agreeing with everything that I've heard. I'm gonna dig into these headphones from the perspective of not only someone who has tested gobs of headphones over the years, but as a studio musician and just a fan of high-end sound. Notice I didn't say the A word there. We're going to talk about what's good, what's great, and what's not so great, and of course, we're gonna have to compare the Sony XM4s as well as the Bose ANC 700. So, here we go. Before we get to it, I gotta know, what was the first thing you thought when you saw these headphones for the first time? Let me know in the comments, I can't wait to hear what you say. Also, do me a favor and click the like button if you like what you see, and subscribe as well because I need your help growing this channel. Also, I've got some links to buy these products in the description in case you would like to support our channel that way. Okay, business over, let's do this. I can imagine you're eager to get to the sound quality and call quality portion of this. We're gonna get there, but there's some important stuff to talk about first, and we have to start with a conversation about materials and build quality. Looking at the AirPods Pro, we have the metal ear cups, which feel great in your hand. Actually, every part of this set of headphones feels great to the touch. The fabric material and the headband has a cool springiness to it. The telescoping portion of the headband has a satisfying smooth movement to it. The ear cups are squishy and covered with a really nice textile. Even the oversized digital crown and noise cancellation button feel great to twist and press. Seriously, ridiculously satisfying. But for as satisfying as they are to the touch, they aren't called handphones. They're called headphones and they need to feel great on your head. Now for some of you, these may be fine. Deep ear cups, breathable ear cups, and well-balanced clamping force help a bit, but the problem is there's a lot of weight to compensate for. Too much weight in my opinion. These materials are nice. They make the AirPods Max feel super luxurious, but practically speaking, I feel like these headphones may be too heavy for some folks, especially if you wear your headphones for hours at a time like I do. There's a reason headphones like the Sony XM4, Bose ANC 700, and even these Bowers & Wilkins PX7 Carbon are made with high-grade plastics and composite materials because they work and they are lightweight and comfortable. So from a comfortability standpoint, I have to call this for the Sony and Bose. Now let's talk about connectivity for just a second. As you might expect, the AirPods Max work best with Apple products. Not only do they connect immediately, but they can also switch from one Apple device to another in a snap. Another benefit is that using an iOS device, you can turn ANC off in the headphones section of the control panel, and you can actually toy with the DSP through the accessibility section, which I wanna mention a little bit later when we talk about sound quality. Unfortunately, if you're an Android user, you lose all of that. There's no turning ANC off as far as I can tell, and no adjusting the DSP without an Apple device. So for connectivity, AirPods Max win for Apple users and Sony and Bose, which both have apps for both platforms with lots of adjustabilities, win for everyone. When it comes to control though, I have to give it to the AirPods Max. The digital crown is fantastic. It's easy to find and the volume control is strangely satisfying to turn. It's also extremely accurate and granular, so you have no trouble reaching your loudness sweet spot. Also, having an almost comically large button for toggling ANC and transparency mode is a very good thing. This is way better than holding your hand over the right ear cup on Sony's XM4s and searching for whichever button it is that turns the ANC 700 into ANC mode. I used to think the swipe control thing was kind of cool too, but I'm kind of over it now. The thing is, the AirPods Max have onboard controls that I want to use. See, this is the kind of stuff Apple just gets right. Now we're gonna talk about battery life, charging times, and the fact that there is no power button. Here's the thing that might surprise you. I've got zero problem with it. No, I'm not trolling you, hear me out here. The AirPods Max go into a low power mode after a while when you set them down. In fact, I put them down on my desk at about 8 p.m. and picked them back up at 7 a.m. the next morning, and they had discharged a measly 7%. I can get that back and more with five minutes of charging, which nets you about 1.5 hours of listening time. And if they sit unused for about 72 hours, they go into ultra low power mode. Practically speaking, it's hard to imagine a scenario where needing a power button is absolutely necessary. Maybe if you walk around with them around your neck unused all day as a fashion accessory, and even then it's not as if they are draining quickly. And as for the 20 hour battery life, I found that to be conservative. I got closer to 25 continuous playing hours with ANC on, and that's enough to get through a couple of days of use before you have to think about charging. So I'm good with the battery life. I think what's valuable about this always kind of on strategy is that if you get a phone call or a Zoom call or whatever, they're ready to go. Just put them on and click. And I love that. 
I do not love the USB-C to lightning cable though. So while the Sony and Bose have power buttons and they have longer battery life and USB-C power, I like the function of the AirPods Max better. So I'm calling it a draw, depends on your priorities. But as we talk about power, we have to talk about this thing. Look, there are plenty of others out there trashing on this, not a case, I'll call it. And I think rightfully so. I don't need to pile on with more vitriol. It's not a case, it isn't protective. And if it weren't for the magnets that force ultra low power mode, I'd say toss it. So for portability, it's an easy win for Sony and Bose here. Now let's talk about noise canceling and transparency mode. And I wanna start with transparency mode because it is amazing. This is one area where the hype is totally real. It's as close to not wearing the headphones as I've ever heard. Everything else pales in comparison. I'm also looking forward to checking out the ANC on a flight someday because from what I can tell, the AirPods Max may just rule the skies. I'm not getting on a plane just yet, but to test the headphones, I tried all three near some loud fans and some HVAC systems and the AirPods Max do really well. They do even better with everyday sounds like people hammering mechanical keyboards or other annoying stuff. I also wore them into a coffee shop and was surprised by how little I heard coming from the espresso machine and general barista noises. Is it the best noise canceling on the planet? I can't say yet, I really need to get on a plane, but it is darn close. Close enough that I can't just call the Sony XM4s the reigning champ. There's another big dog on the hill now. So for ANC, it's too close to call, but for transparency mode, AirPods Max rule. Finally, it's time to get to sound quality. But before I get into fidelity, I wanna make a mention about spatial audio. I did test it, and spatial audio, if you don't know, is a sort of 3D sound competitor to Dolby Atmos and DTS Headphone X. I think it's fun, cool feature, but not a selling point for me. And when it comes to audio fidelity, the AirPod Max do sound very good. I think the mid-range has a really nice presence to it that you don't get as much out of the Sony XM4 because the Sony have more mid-bass that tends to crowd the vocal range a little bit. That bass aspect is notable because while the Sony XM4 have more punch, the AirPods Max by comparison seem less impactful, but that doesn't mean that they don't have solid bass. They get very deep, so tonally you aren't missing anything. I just noticed that the bass guitar in tracks I like to listen to was less prominent, and the kick drum had a little less punch than with the XM4, and even the bows. The Max's mids are more balanced and voices sound gorgeous. As for the treble region, there's a good amount of sparkle in cymbals and brass instruments, which I like, but there isn't a ton of instrumental separation. As far as soundstage and imaging go, that's about average. I feel a little more close to the music with the Sony XM4 and the Bose ANC 700, but I feel like I hear more detail with the AirPods Max, which is fun. Interestingly, Apple Music sounds better than Spotify with the Apple AirPods Max, and I suspect that's because Apple uses the AAC codec. Now, some have said the AirPods Max sound better with the ANC turned off. I did not find that to be the case. Perhaps the frequency response is more flat, but I feel like the music loses some of its life. I also heard that making adjustments to the DSP through the accessibility menu in iOS could improve the sound, but frankly, I like the way they sound out of the box with the balance setting and the slight boost setting. So from an audio quality perspective, I'm enjoying the AirPods Max very much, and I wanna keep on listening to just the AirPods Max for a while because I'm guessing my penchant for punch might subside a bit over the weeks and months. But for right now, I tend to prefer the Sony XM4. Now that's a deeply personal preference. I can see why someone might prefer the sound of the Max, and they sound very good, good enough to support that 550 price point a bit. But in the end, between these three headphones, I'm gonna stick with the Sony XM4 as my top pick. Mostly because they are more comfortable for me, and I can see myself picking them up for use more often. Also because they're less expensive and easier to access, and because the ANC is rock solid, and the battery life is great, and they come with a headphone cable and can now connect to two devices at once, and because they have a case I can travel with, a lot of reasons really. But in terms of cool factor, there is no doubt the AirPods Max have it, and I still think they are one of the most fun headphones I've gotten to test. Thanks as always for watching everyone. Now that you know a lot about the AirPods Max, do you still wanna get a pair? Let me know down in the comments. Like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and here's two other videos I think you'll like.